All right, what's going on everybody? So today I'm working on the engine again today. This is the uh, fully built um, IAG Block 257 that we're putting in the wagon. Um, so today I'm just painting up some valve covers, getting those ready to go on. Um, but I need first I need to set up my Killer Bee oil pan. That's what this <clears throat> mostly is going to be about, is uh, how to set up one of these things. Because it's a little different than a typical pan. Um, I got this one used. It had a one of these welds cracked on the inside here, but we just, it's all aluminum, so we just welded it back up. So good as new. Um, I did have to buy a one of these Killer Bee hardware kits. So this comes with all new bolts, but more importantly, it comes with these spacers. And so this oil pan um, has an extra quart capacity, so it's like a six quart capacity. Um, so this uh, pickup tube, which works in their stock pans, needs to be spaced down. Um, so if you buy this whole kit, it just it comes with everything. But I got this one used, like I said, so I had to buy this kit. You get the little pedestals and the pickup spacers. Uh, we also got some extra O-rings because it didn't come with all of them. Um, but yeah, we got a brand new O-ring in here. And all these are all brand new, so... So we're getting this thing set up. Okay, so first we're going to get our winded tray in place. Um, I like to put a little bit of Loctite on these bolts back here. Um, just to keep them from rattling loose. This is inside the crankcase here, so... Typically on any bolts I put inside an engine, get Loctite. Okay, we're going to put our little pedal stools down here. Put a little spacer. This already has the O-ring in the backside, so... I'll just sit in there like that. And get these guys lined up. Then we take this. It has another O-ring back here. And put the bolts through. And uh, need two hands for this. But if you put the bolts through the end of this, you can just slip them through all, all you know, all, all through them. Okay, we got those started. So now we get our other guys in here. It comes with extra long extended bolts for all this stuff, so makes it really nice. Again, I put Loctite on all these as well. Okay, so I had those bolts backwards. Um, these go into here with the lock washers and these have an extra little flange because these holes are bigger. So these are all torqued to seven and a half foot pounds. Um, got a little bit of blue Loctite on them. I need to just use the OEM bolts. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten those down. Should be good to go. Okay, those torqued, I went ahead and used some uh, brake clean, clean up any residual oil that might be on this surface here. And we're gonna put our RTV down. I like to use the right stuff. Uh, it's the brand of RTV, <sighs> Permatex. Um, seems to hold it pretty well, so. I put a nice uh, nice thin layer on here, and I like to spread it out with my finger. Um, what's interesting is this one doesn't actually use the O-ring that's on a stock pan that goes right here. It just has a big open drain back right there. So I guess you get all the flow. So I'm gonna clean everything again and put our RTV down. All right, got a nice layer of RTV. Got this guy all cleaned up. So now we're gonna set it down on there. And it came with all these stainless steel Allen bolts. So start putting those all in there and I'll let it kind of solidify a little bit for maybe like 10 to 15 minutes before, not even that long, maybe like five minutes. Kind of let it solidify and then I'll finish tightening everything down. Okay, so I went around, torqued these guys to, it's just five foot pounds <clears throat> according to their instructions. Um, so you have a nice little bead poking out the, all around the whole side. I might have put a tad bit too much RTV, but I usually do it about like this and they don't leak, so um, pretty happy with it. Wish Maybe wish I used it a little bit less, but um, I'll go ahead and pick up some of this extra goop. And then uh, I don't, I always leave the bead all the way around here. I don't wipe it off, so. Uh, tends to help a little bit. So now we're gonna get to painting. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through and just double check all my valve lash 
Um, the machine shop already went through and set all these with uh, the brand new buckets we got in there. So it's all hard mechanical timing basically, so we can't uh, valve lash. So there's no adjustments to be made, but I'd like to go through, check the check all of them, make sure they're, they're decent. We got eight thousandths on the intake and ten thousandths on the exhaust. Exhaust is always a little bit bigger because uh, you know, there's more heat expansion. So looks like we're a little tight <clears throat> on these front two. Um, not really sure why, but it's it's probably probably fine. Looks like we're at about nine instead of ten on that one, and about seven on that one, or seven and a half. It's kind of strange. So next, we're just gonna clean all this up, get our little RTV in the little corners here. New valve cover gaskets, put these valve covers on. I did have to paint these because in the um, from the parts car, the accident, they got covered in uh, battery acid, so <clears throat> they looked terrible. So I had to paint them something, so I chose this color. I think uh, it's kind of a cool like metallic copper. I think we're gonna paint the intake manifold, uh, the upper intake manifold the same color as well. It'd be pretty cool, so. Yep, let's go through these and get those on. Okay, we've got all, all that checked. <clears throat> I almost forgot we need to put these uh, half moons in here. So these are uh, Torx Solutions um, aluminum ones. Pretty much, I mean, tons of companies make these. IEG makes them, obviously. Um, OEM ones are almost the same price as these, and they're plastic. And so I just want to go with something reusable and aluminum. So. But we're gonna have to basically RTV these in. So I've always put a little bit of RTV in the groove here, like a big bead in there, and then we just pop them in. And then a little RTV on the corners, RTV right in these little spots, and our valve cover can go on. So <clears throat> this is pretty much how I like to do it. Just get a nice little bead across there, just to smooth it out. Just get a nice little transition there. Then I'm gonna put a bunch of uh, assembly lube on the cams, because there's already some on them, and the lifters and all that, but I just wanna put some more on it, so everything is nice and lubricated for the first start. But uh, yeah, so I got my valve cover all ready. Should be good to go. And there she is, all sealed up. So, <clears throat> at least you have to worry about this side of the engine, so now we'll flip it over and do the other side. So for some reason these are a little bit tough to get in. The other side they slid right in, except for one of them I had to tap it in, but these are just a little tight. I just don't think the casting is made correctly or maybe there's some burrs in here or something, but basically we're gonna have to put some RTV in there and then tap it in with a hammer. You can see it's just a little tight. So uh, They're aluminum, so they should clearance a little bit. Gotta be careful not to break them. All right, just use a little tiny hammer and just give it a little tap tap and uh, they slid right in. So, not a big deal. I was a little more worried about that than I should have been. So, uh, we got our cams all lubed up. Got lots and lots of lube on all of these lobes. Got it all the way around. I'm gonna put some little RTV in the corners and get our valve cover on. Okay, so I'm starting to put my uh, timing covers on. Um, I had to buy all new ones because in the accident that, you know, these are all broken. So it is pretty cool that you can still buy these brand new. Um, so I got a brand new one for this side, a brand new center one. Um, I had to buy a brand, or a, a used one on this outside one. I couldn't find um, brand new ones, but this one for this side survived. So I need to clean this and we'll reuse it. That's for that side. And then I got a centerpiece, brand new centerpiece and a used passenger side, or driver side one, so that'll be good. Um, I did get something a little fancy. I don't think I've showed this before, but these Roger Clark Motorsports.
these are our exhaust gears. So these, super, super nice. These are Roger Clark Motorsports exhaust cam gears. Um, these are aluminum because the factory ones are um, plastic and they tend to get fatigued and they break a lot. And so um, just as an insurance policy, these are actually not that expensive compared to just getting new OEM ones. Um, I also ended up getting these. So these are brand new um, cam bolts, but they are a different head. So these, normally they have like a little hex key and they always strip, it always sees, you gotta drill them out. So I'm not doing any of that. I got these, they were very expensive. It's like $50 for four bolts. But you know, when it's time to take these, take these off, do a cam seal or something later down the line, I'll be really glad I didn't have to drill this out, so. So I got a little bit ahead of myself and I forgot to put on all my AVCS stuff and also that big spider web of crap. Um, this is all the PCV and heater core stuff that needs to go in down here. And this is a whole lot easier to fit that in there with this timing cover off. And it's also impossible to put this in with, with that on there. So. I got all new crush washers because this engine seal kit is awesome, has everything I need. Um, we're going to clean our ABCS solenoids, make sure there's no, no, no metal flakes or anything in there. I mean, this, this motor didn't blow up, it just was in a car accident, so there shouldn't be any metal in there anyway, but get new O-rings, get all this stuff set up, tighten these down before we put that cover on. And I uh, put a little bit of paint on this just because it had some rusty spots and it looks gross. So, yeah. So in order to put those on, uh, we need to put our coolant crossover pipe on at the same time because they kind of share a bolt on a couple of these sides here. So, got fresh O-rings, got our bolts ready, got the little pipe over there. Let's go. Okay, now that all that mess is in place, <laughs> Uh, it should make it a whole lot easier to uh, get the manifold on, all that kind of stuff, which the manifold's not ready yet, but we're just trying to get as far as we can. So now I think we're going to put our dipstick in, because that's the next thing that needs to go here before we put the cover on and cam gears and all that stuff. But it's looking pretty good. Okay, so this side's all done. Had to <coughs> snake this guy off here this kind of lined up. I don't have a water pump yet otherwise I'd be doing this at the same time. I might have to take this back off just to make it easier. Um, let's get these the heater core lines hooked up. Got this one put on. I might just get our oil pump put on here and maybe the exhaust cam gears. I think should be go ahead good enough to do that now. So oil pumps. Um, this is a stock OEM, I think it's a 11 mil oil pump. Um, didn't want to go crazy on this one. Um, this should be plenty of oil pressure. This is kind of what IEG recommends. They do have a ported version, but I, I just don't, I don't need that for our power levels. So what I always do is I always take these apart. So I take all these out. Um, I pack, you got to pack the whole thing with grease. So this is like assembly lube. This is just some different brand, so it's white. But uh, I pack the whole thing, all the chambers inside here. Uh, with assembly lube, that way when you first start, it hasn't it actually has something in here um, to create suction. Because what happens a lot of the times if these are completely dry, you'll be cranking the motor over and you won't build oil pressure because there's an air pocket basically in your oil pump. So packing this thing with assembly lube is the way to go. And then I always put red Loctite on all these bolts because these do end up backing out um, on factory cars and you lose oil pressure obviously. So. Got those Loctited, super tight on those to make sure they never come out. Now we're gonna put our RTV on the outside of here. Pop our little O-ring in the front of the crankcase there. I think I already got, nope, I gotta put the front main seal in still too. But that's easy, and we'll get this oil pump on. Okay, so I just slapped it on there. Uh, you guys have seen me put oil pumps on a thousand times, so I'm not really trying to show all that. Uh, luckily, I have, happen to have a wood drift key um, because this just, <laughs> kit didn't come with one, so luckily I had one, so I just flipped the motor over, tapped it in with a hammer. Uh, it moves nicely. Yep, so I think I'm going to throw these cam gears on and we're going to wrap this up. 
Okay, so this is where I'm going to leave it here for now. Um, I need to order a timing belt kit and some intake ABCS gears, but those gears alone are like $400. So it's very expensive. So um, we'll come back to this when I get some more parts. Um, these are looking pretty fancy. Just kind of set them on there. We'll have to go through and torque everything. But I want to get a water pump and a timing belt kit and all that stuff. Get it all on here, torque everything to spec. Um, then we can put our new covers on. And then we start dealing with the intake and wiring. And uh, I just threw the cam sensors in here. I couldn't find any O-rings to replace these, but they seem all right. So um, but yeah, it's looking pretty good. Start looking like an EJ257. It's not bad. So pretty stoked. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, you know, give us a like and subscribe. If you got any questions or whatever, uh, just post them in the comments. All right. Thanks for watching.